This is not going to be an easy video. Talking about quitting smoking for me is very challenging because this has been a very challenging procedure for over two years. If you are looking for inspiration, you might find some here, but it's not going to be inspiration of the easy kind. This is not going to be lovey-dovey, you know, oh, I, I went to a uh, you know, a Tibetan monk and he cured me instantly with some, you know, wisdom or something. No, I had to work hard at this. I had to work very, very hard at this for a very long time. You know, I am really, really proud of myself. You know, I have to say that this is something that I can absolutely, I can absolutely, you know, put up there with some of my greatest accomplishments of my lifetime for my health, for my family, uh, you know, for the world around me, for my finances. Smoking has been an absolute chain, an anchor around my neck for 30 years. Now, let's go back a little bit. Uh, you know, I want to talk a little bit about Johnny, Happy Console Gamer, because his journey helped me quite a lot along the way. But I'm going to come back to that a little bit later. I'm a little bit younger than Johnny, uh, pretty much a console generation younger than Johnny, if you will. Uh, I'm 45, and, uh, you know, I grew up in the 80s, but I started smoking in the 90s. Uh, when I was about, you know, 15, it was 1993 or so, uh, and, you know, I had my first cigarette, uh, you know, when I was around 15 or 16, and I didn't really start smoking full time for the first couple of years. It was just stealing smokes from people or bumming smokes out front of the high school or whatever. But the thing you have to understand, and I'm sure, Johnny, if you're watching this, I know you watch some of these videos, and I'd really love your feedback uh, if you do watch this, but for me at least in my small town, smoking was something the cool kids did. It was expected if you wanted to fit in with the cool crowd, you know, and looking back, maybe those kids weren't so cool, uh, you know, but the ones that were hanging around the flagpole at the high school, smoking on break and lunch and, you know, skipping class to walk downtown and, you know, get somebody to buy smokes for you and that sort of thing. That was the cool crowd to me back then. And everybody smoked. Everybody that I knew smoked. Whether you were 15 or 16, or whether you were 40 or 50, you know, both of my parents smoked at one time or another and quit, uh, you know, during my lifetime. Um, everybody smoked back then. Uh, you could smoke in restaurants. You could smoke in the mall. There were ashtrays beside the benches in the mall. You know, you could just walk through the mall smoking and flicking your ash on the floor and like, it was a different time. You could smoke in hospitals. I remember sitting in uh, a hospital waiting room when I was about maybe 10 years old, waiting for somebody, one of my mother's parents, to, you know, have a baby. Uh, or One of my mother's friends was having a baby or something. And I remember sitting in that waiting room and absolutely gagging and choking on all the secondhand smoke in that waiting room. Ashtrays all over the place and stuff in the hospital, in the maternity ward. You know, it was everywhere. It was normal. And nobody thought twice when I started smoking. I mean, my mom wasn't too happy, but other than that, it was a pretty normal thing for a teenager in the 90s to smoke. And, and that's what hooked me. And by the time I was of working age, going into my 20s and stuff like that, I was smoking full time, pack a day, whatever, and throughout my life, I started smoking more and more and more, as the addiction will tend to do. Uh, you know, I, I got up to a pack and a half a day, and then I was pretty darn close to two packs a day at my height pretty recently in the last couple of years. And this started to have a huge impact on my health. In my 40s now, you know, things aren't the same. You're not as resilient in your 40s as you are in your 20s and 30s. You, you don't bounce back from stuff as much. When you get sick, you know, every time I got a cold, I would get a deep chest infection. Every time I got sick, I was way sicker, uh, you know, with chest and throat, uh, you know, irritations, and strep throat and things like that. It, you know, smoking does some pretty nasty things to you. So, you know, if you're watching this and you don't currently smoke, please don't start. It's absolutely an 
awful habit. It's terrible for your health. Getting back to Happy Console Gamer. About two years ago, I really determined that I needed to quit smoking because for those of you who don't know, uh, I struggle with hernias. I have two hernias right now, both of which have been repaired and both of which have failed and burst open again. And uh, my surgeon refused to fix those hernias until I quit smoking and lost a significant amount of weight because those are major risk factors for those hernias recurring. So uh, for the last two years, I've been on this mission and I have lost quite a bit of weight. And now, thankfully, I can say I quit smoking, but by no means was that easy at all. Uh, you know, Happy Console Gamer made a video several years ago about his quitting smoking story. And I always found that, I've, I've watched it several times over the years, and always found it inspiring that, you know, just somebody who I respect has been through this journey and he was able to overcome this thing that I'm struggling with. Now, his story is quite a bit different than mine because, you know, he basically decided that he needed to quit smoking, uh, you know, pr pretty quickly. And he went through a process with hypnosis where, uh, you know, he basically made a cut and dried decision. He went through the process of the hypnosis. And as far as I can tell from his video, he quit that day and never looked back. Uh, and not to say that that was easy for him, but it wasn't anywhere near that easy for me. Um, I have tried to quit smoking a dozen times in my life, even going back 15 years. I can remember, you know, getting on the patch, for example, and, uh, you know, I think I made it maybe a week or 10 days or something at one point, like 15 years ago, and then I just caved and went back to smoking. And more recently, in the last year and a half or so that I've really been struggling with this for my health, I reached out to a program called STOP, um, which was put together by CAMH, the Canadian Association of Mental Health, which provides uh, smoking cessation materials to people who maybe are lower income or, you know, struggling with things like that. I don't have you know, the most money for these things. And I felt like I needed a little bit of a, a hand up um, just in terms of encouragement, right? If I get these materials for free, uh, I, I'm going to feel more honor bound to try my hardest, right? So uh, about a year and a half ago, I got this box from Cam H that included I think six weeks worth of step one patches. Those are like 21 milligram patches. And then there was two weeks of step two pack, patch, patches that are 14 milligrams. They step down the nicotine. And then I think there was one week of step three that's like seven milligrams. And they also included a whole bunch of lozenges and nicotine gum and stuff like that to supplement. And in that first time, in that first time of quitting, I was able to be successful in quitting for 10 days. I went 10 days uh, before I caved and started smoking again. And I fought and battled back and forth and quit again for a day or two here and there until I ran out of materials. And then I basically just gave up for a couple of months. Um, they only provide that box once in any calendar year to the same person. Um, but I was able to get a second box uh, towards the end of last year. And I was able to go, I guess it was actually early this year. It was either December or January, I think. And I was able to go 30 days without a cigarette the second time. And I was absolutely elated. And that 30 days, actually, I think it was, you know, no, my timing is wrong. It was actually much more recently. Uh, because I went to New York where I actually got this Nintendo sweater from Nintendo New York just a uh, couple of months back. And uh, during that New York trip, there was a lot of stress and a lot of, you know, stuff going on. And I ended up caving and going back to smoking during the New York trip and for a couple of weeks after before I got my courage up again. And now uh, I'm on my third kit uh, of stop smoking materials. 
And like through all of this, it's just been a struggle, an absolute struggle. Cravings just driving me absolutely bananas. Even 30 days into quitting, cravings just driving me crazy. And the the stop smoking materials really did help me, um, you know, in the moment for the most part, uh, you know, the, the patches and the gum and stuff like that really did work for me, but I really had to pull out all the stops on willpower. I had to avoid all the people in my life who still smoked. I had to stop hanging out with those people, especially the people who would not respect the fact that I was trying to quit smoking because, you know, you know what guys are like, right? They, they try to, they try to tempt you into the wrong path just because they think it's funny, right? I guess maybe those aren't the best friends in the world, but, uh, I had to avoid those people. I had to stay away from the people who were smoking because it was too much temptation for me to just bum a smoke to cave, right? So I managed to make it 30 days that second time. Now on my, I'm finished, almost finished my third box of supplies. And I can say confidently now after all of this work and all of this heartache that I have quit smoking. I'm still an addict. You like you have to realize smoking is like any other drug like heroin or cocaine or crack or anything like that. You're always going to be an addict and there's always the risk that you can, you know, slide back into that uh, you know, pretty easily. But this time, because of my health concerns and everything else, I've actually learned to dislike smoking. And that is absolutely key. The smell turns me off now. It makes me, you know, grosses me out, to be honest, when I smell other people smoking, when I, you know, walk past a restaurant patio or something, and I smell somebody having a smoke or whatever, it actually makes me kind of feel nauseous. Uh, you know, I've gotten over it. I don't want to smoke anymore. And that was the key, the absolute key, because all those other times that I tried to quit, I did not really want to quit. I knew I should quit, but I did not want to. Now I've gotten to the place after two months uh, without a cigarette where I actually don't want to smoke. And, you know, it took me a lot of soul searching and you know honestly uh, you know happy console gamers video his stop smoking video at the beginning of this finally successful venture uh, on the first day i watched his stop smoking video like six times in a row over the course of two hours uh, just watched it over and over and over again and heard him talk about how wonderful it is to not be smoking anymore. And, you know, it, I really have to thank Johnny for doing what he did. And that's why I'm making this video because he helped me so much. And also another YouTuber helped me a lot and that is RGT85. And for a completely different reason because I was kind of salty. Uh, you know, RGT85 is a guy who grew up quite like me and you know the the wrong side of the tracks crowd and all that sort of thing and he's the type of guy that I would have expected to smoke into an early grave that he would be smoking two packs a day until he died at 60 or something and he had some health issues and he quit just like that I mean I think he vapes a little bit here and there but if he's being honest he quit basically cold turkey and that made me kind of jealous to be honest it made me kind of salty because i figure if rgt can do this you know rgt you know why can't i if he can do it i can certainly do it and you know so between rgt and johnny i, I just figured you know it is time it is time to take control of my life it is time to make a decision for my health for my family, for my wallet, because smoking is ridiculously expensive now. Here in Canada, a single package of cigarettes, a 25 pack, will cost you 16 to 18 dollars. It's absolutely crazy. So, you know, it was time. It was time 10 years ago. It was time 20 years ago. And, uh, you know, now I can thankfully say I have quit smoking. I am no longer a smoker. And, uh, you know, I don't even need that accountability anymore, but I'm giving you that accountability that, you know, I have quit. I am not a smoker and it feels wonderful 
to be able to say that because, you know, this is something that has owned me my entire life to the point where I was so addicted to cigarettes that I could not go more than 30 minutes without a cigarette. I like, I have turned down job opportunities in my life because I couldn't smoke freely. You know, I have chosen jobs where I could work outside, like in construction or a delivery job where I could work in my own car or something just so that I could smoke freely. Uh, you know, I've turned down good opportunities. I have lost relationships with, you know, with great women and stuff because of the addiction and the money that was being spent and things like that. And now to be able to say that I have taken that control, that I own this now, and I am not a smoker. I am so, so proud of myself and so thankful to the people who helped me. I'm so thankful to my mom for her encouragement and her help, even though at times I really hated, you know, being nagged by her, uh, you know, and people around me. My children, my daughters, Lily and Ivy, uh, you know, really pushed me to quit smoking and they were really harsh. And you know what? I was terrible. I used to smoke around my own kids. I used to smoke in the car with my kids in the car, just absolutely ignorant behavior. And, you know, it was through their encouragement and my mom's encouragement and all of this stuff. But what you have to realize, what I said at the beginning of this video is that for me, like this is not the kind of inspirational video that maybe some people put out there where here's a, a magic three-step process where you just do this and you just do that and you'll be cured. There was no just anything. I had to work and work and work at this. I had to fail a dozen times, failing and failing and failing and feeling so bad about myself, losing my confidence, uh, you know, and just feeling like I could never overcome this battle in my life. And here I am today and I have done it. I have reached that spot that I have wanted to get to for so long. And you know what? I just, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for all the help I got. And, uh, you know, if you're out there right now, and you're smoking and you want to quit smoking, all I can say to you is just keep trying. Every little bit helps. You know, I went through a period uh, between the second and third batches of cigarettes where I really didn't want to smoke, and I would buy a carton or a package of smokes. I would smoke one, two, maybe three cigarettes, and then I would throw that $17 package of smokes out the window and go the rest of the day without smoking because I figured it was better for me to waste that $17 than it was to smoke another cigarette. And I did that over and over again, throwing lighters and packages, mostly full packages of cigarettes out the car window just to get them away from me because, you know, what am I doing? I'm like a crack addict. I need my fix. And I go and I, you know, I spend $20 on a pack of smokes and a lighter and I have two or three of the smoked and I throw them out the window. But every little bit helps. Every cigarette that you don't smoke is another victory on the road to quitting. Every cigarette that you break or throw in the garbage or, you know, give away or whatever, every cigarette that you don't smoke is one more step along the path to quitting. And you have to remember that you're going to fail. You're going to fail over and over and over again. But victory you know, in, in any war, there are going to be battles. There are going to be multiple skirmishes, multiple battles, and you're going to have to, you know, lose a few and win a few and lose a few and win a few before you finally win the war. And today, I'm proud to say that I have won the war. I'm no longer a smoker. How about you? Are you interested in, you know, becoming a non-smoker? Uh, have you already become a non-smoker? I, I would really love to hear down in the comments some of your quitting smoking stories. Uh, you know, I don't know what to say here. This is a very raw subject for me, and I hope that my honesty comes through here because I'm not sugarcoating anything. This was the hardest thing I've done in my life. Um, I 
I have been addicted to other things in the past. Shocker, you know, my halo's a little tarnished. And I've beaten other addictions much easier than I beat this. Smoking is no joke. Uh, you know, don't listen to those people. Don't get discouraged by those people that just quit cold turkey one day and never looked back. Uh, you know, some people are able to do that and some people are not. For me, it was a massive struggle that, you know, just in the recent time here lasted over a year and a half for me. Almost two years of constant fighting, of constantly feeling bad about myself for failing, uh, you know, for kicking myself around because I couldn't do this one simple thing. But I'm here today to tell you I did win the battle, I did win the war, and you can too. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stay classy.